well that never runs dry. Come take a drink, it will bless your life. You've been searching for something that will satisfy your need. Come drink. Come to the well, the well of living water. Come to the well, the well of living water. Come to the well that never runs dry. Come take a drink. Bless your life. You've been searching for something that will satisfy your need. Yeah. Come drink. Come to the well, the well of living water. Jesus, hey God, and for you and me, he died, God, hey God, we thank you for love, God, for it was love that lifted us, it was love that brought us out of the muck and the miry, it was love that forgave us, it is love that sees beyond our faults and sees our needs, it is love, God, that continues to wrap around us each and every day, it is your love, God, hallelujah, that that gives us grace and mercy. Hey, God, that follows us each and every day, God. It is your love, God, that I am not consumed. It is your love that I stand here on today, giving you all the glory, giving you all the honor, giving you all the praise, God. It is because your love, I am here. It is your love, God, that I can raise my voice. I can lift my hands. I can magnify you. I can exhort you. I can tell you all about my trouble, God. Hey, God, I can pour out before you. I can tell you, God, I love you. God, I need you. God, I gotta have you. You are awesome in this place, God. I thank you, God, for the freedom, for the freedom, for the freedom. 
kingdom for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I thank you for the liberty on this morning. I thank you for the blessings on this morning. I thank you for the hope on this morning. I thank you. I thank you for the mind, God. I thank you for regulating my mind. I thank you for regulating my heart. I thank you for being a promise keeper. I thank you for being a bridge over troubled water. I thank you for being my healer. I thank you for being my deliverer. I thank you for being my refuge. I thank you, God. Hey, God, for being. Hey, God, food when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. I thank you for being everything I need. I thank you for being a mother to the motherless. A father to the fatherless. I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank God that whatever we need you to be, that you will be, God. We need you. Hallelujah. To be. Hey, God, in the name of Jesus. Hey, God, on this morning, God. Hey, God, hallelujah. And to feel this place, feel this house. Hey, God, feel our hearts, feel our minds, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. You are real good, God. You are real good, God. Hey, God, and I love you. And I praise you, God. As we enter into this house, help us to lift up holy hands on one accord. Help us to open up our mouth. Help us to cry hallelujah. Help us to cry thank you, Jesus. Hey, God, Abba, our Father. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, God, healer. Thank you, God. Thank God in the name of Jesus. God. Hey, God, I lift you up and I magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a real good praise. Give him a real good praise. Bless him on this morning. He, hallelujah, is worthy of of all the glory he is worthy he is worthy he died for you he died for your sin he died for your mess he knew where you would be he knew what you would do he knew the lies he would tell he knew the places you would go deep in your heart deep in your mind down into the gutter down into the pits hey god but he said i love you i love you enough to meet you where you are. I love you enough. Hey, God, to raise you out of sin. I love you enough to die on the cross. He said, there is nothing too hard for me. Hallelujah. 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 So we owe him on this morning. We owe him your children, your spouses, your mother, your father, every broken place. He sees, he knows. Hey, God, and he is there. Hey, God, so we bless him on this morning. We give him praise on this morning. I owe him. You owe him. If you have nothing to say, thank him for your neighbor. Thank him for your neighbor. Tell him thank you for healing him. Thank you for saving him. Thank you for keeping him. Thank you for raising him. Thank you in the name of Jesus for protecting him throughout the night. Thank you, God, for the car crash. That should have been deadly. That should have been fatal. Thank you, God, for the cancer. That should have been death. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the baby that shouldn't have been born. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Everything that the devil tried to steal, everything that he tried to thwart, God said not so. And we so we thank him for that. We thank him for the victory. We thank him for the blessing. We thank you that he prayed that our faith fell us not. That he prayed, hallelujah, that he came. Hey, God, hallelujah, to give us life and that more abundantly. And so we thank him, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. For victory is ours on the day. Victory, victory shall be mine in the name of Jesus. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory shall be mine in the name of Jesus. 
shall be mine. Hey, God, we thank you for the crimson stream of blood. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the word of God that lives in me. I thank you for the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. We owe him. We owe him, saints of God. Hallelujah. 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 Don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. Hallelujah. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give him glory. Come on and give him glory. Come on and wave your hands. Shout hallelujah. Stomp your feet. Whatever it is that you need to do to give him glory. Because today is a day of thanksgiving. Oh God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank him for the blood. It cleanses. We thank him for the blood. It saves us. We thank him for the blood. It redeems us. We thank him for the blood. It's everlasting. We thank him for the blood. We thank him for the blood. He didn't have to do it, so we thank him. We thank him for the blood. We thank you for the blood, Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank him for the blood. Where would we be without your blood? Where would we be without your blood? Where would we be? Where would we be? Thank you for your blood. My God, we thank him. We thank him. We thank him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you. You did it just for us. You knew that we would sin time and time again. You knew that we would mess up over and over. You knew that we would turn our back, and yet you died just for us. And not only did you die, but you got back up. Hallelujah. You are the true living God. The true only living God. And we celebrate you on today. How you're King of Kings and your Lord of Lords. We celebrate you on today. you can too. Despite how you feel on today, despite what your situation may be, it's his blood that has keeping power. Look to the cross. come to praise God on today? Did anybody come to celebrate Jesus, his life, and his resurrection? Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh God, we bless your holy name in this place. For it is
you 
God glory hallelujah come on put those hands together and give God the praise in this place hallelujah 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 this resurrection Sunday hallelujah I come to magnify him because I have survived hallelujah what was designed to destroy me hallelujah because of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross is the reason why I'm standing here today my God, what Jesus did on Calvary's cross is the reason I have hope for tomorrow. Can somebody give God praise? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's Resurrection Sunday. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. As the songs were being sung, all I could think about is how unworthy I am of such an extravagant gift. How unworthy I am. The foolishness, the mess, the things that I've done, and the fact that Jesus literally gave his life. Knowing that I was not going to be perfect, knowing good and well that I was going to mess up time and time again, but he gave his life. Can somebody just praise God for that? Resurrection Sunday. We give God glory this morning. Amen. We want to welcome you to the well house of worship. This is the place where you can come and draw. Whatever you stand in need of, this is the place where you can come and draw. Somebody say draw. This is where I come to draw from heaven on today. Amen. It's good to see each and every one of you out today. Amen. Sister Carol, Sister Vanessa, good to see y'all again. Back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Miss Joan, which is uh, Sister Lashami's uh, mother, she's in the house. We give God praise for her. Amen. My sister is here. Amen. <laughs> It's good to see, it's good to see all of our guests. It's good to see each and every one of you today. And I cannot forget Mother Edna has stepped up in the building today. And she said, I'm going to the warehouse of worship. I gotta get my hair done. She got them carols tight over there. Good gracious, amen. But if you only knew what she's been through, what, in the past, what, year, year and a half? Everything that she's been through, and to see her, I, I was, I was, Sister, um, Sister Venice was walking back out to the car, and she was going to the, and um, Mother Edna was going to the bathroom, and so I was kind of, I was kind of walking to show her, but I was actually walking with her just to make sure she didn't fall or stumble or anything. She was walking so well, and I was just like, I was amazed. Again, if you only knew what she has been through, my God, hallelujah, sickness, my God, infection, all kinds of things 
that she's gone through, but God still is the healer. There is nobody like my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give God praise. We give God praise for each and every one of you. I'm Pastor Ralph Wilson Jr., and I'm excited to be, to be here on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Every Sunday should be Resurrection Sunday, but especially today is the day that the world uh, is reminded or the world celebrates our risen Savior. My God, they call it Easter. We call it Resurrection Sunday. But this is the day, the one day out of the entire year that has been set aside to, to, to acknowledge the, the mighty, powerful work that Jesus did on the cross for you and for me. Amen. Can somebody give God praise? Amen. At this time, we're going to keep it rolling. At this time, we're going to ask Sister, uh, Sister Veronica to come forth with our announcements at this time. Praise the Lord and good morning. Amen. Matthew 28, 5 and 6 says, The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Are you happy this Resurrection Sunday? Hallelujah. He is risen. I am here to render this morning's announcements. We invite all women to join us every Monday and Friday morning from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. for prayer via Zoom. Please join us every Monday night at 8 p.m. for corporate prayer via Zoom. Calling all men every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. for our men's devotion and prayer conference call via Zoom. Do you guys notice a pattern? We are a praying church. Amen? Amen. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we have our deeper Bible study via Zoom, and we also fast corporately from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every Wednesday. April 12th, calling all men for the first men's fellowship outing of 2024. Please see Minister Brown after service for further details. April 28th is the Well House of Worship Family and Friends Day. Amen. You guys can clap for that. So please invite your family and a friend or two. Amen. Amen. So I have a save the date for you. Saturday, October 26th, Dr. Sonny Turner's Fragrance of Purpose Women's Ministry presents the annual You Be Her Conference. Registration is open now. In closing, if you want to stay on top of all that we have going on here at the Well House of Worship, please download our church app, the Well House of Worship, in your Google Play and Apple stores. This concludes this morning's announcement. Amen. Amen. Lots of lots uh, coming up. Um, we're excited again. We're excited just to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. It's offering time, and we get excited in the house. We get excited at the well house of worship because this is the time where we can show God how much we trust Him, how much we believe, um, how much we even honor Him with our with our free will gift on this morning. Amen. So let's stand to our feet. Amen. It's sowing time. It's seed time. Amen. And whether you have physical or digital offering, I want you to place it in your right hand and make this declaration with me. Say, I sow this seed because I believe it will release increase. Amen. To put a scripture on that, we look to St. Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. It says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a what? That's right, a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Amen. For those, we're having technical difficulties, so we don't have the screen up today. Um, but those that are online, you see the ways to give there. If you're in the house and you desire.
desire to give online, you can give at www.thewellhow.com forward slash giving, or you can um, text the well how to 1 888 or you can cash out us at dollar sign the well how or you can zail us at info at the well how.com amen if you have physical offering to give today just lift up your hands and brother Caden will come to you at this time That's it, God, in the name of Jesus. You know the plans that you have for each and every one of our lives, and we pray that you will do it. Manifest your glory in each and every one of us right now in the name of Jesus. Every household, every marriage, our children, in the schools, in the workplaces, God, we pray that you will manifest your glory in the name of Jesus. As we have come this morning on this Resurrection Sunday, God, we just pray, God, that you will send a word that will encourage us, a word that will remind us of the power that is in the resurrection. And so I pray, God, that you will move. God, I pray that you will move upon the hearts and the minds. Begin to, right now, melt the heart and heart like butter right now. God, until your people surrender, until your people submit and obey. God, I pray today that you will send the anointing today that destroys every single yoke. Oh, don't just break the yoke. Destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that the captive may be saved free that the captive oh God may rise up oh God out of the grave God to live the life that you have designed for them God so I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just move in this place like never before have your way in Jesus name we pray let everybody say amen amen we're not going to have fun church at this time we're going to have we're just going to keep everybody in the room uh, on today but as you are standing we're going to look to Matthew chapter 27 verse 45 through 53 and as I said earlier um, we're having technical difficulties, so the, 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 the screen is not up today. And so you're going to have to pull out your phone or, or pull out your Bible um, and follow along with us. Uh, verse, verses 45 through 53. And y'all know I try to keep, I try to keep the, uh, the, the verses that we read, I try to keep, condense them. But just to kind of give you context, we're going to read ver chapter 27 of the the gospel of matthew verses 45 through 52 i mean 53 amen um and i'm gonna read this from the english standard version it says now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour that is noon till 3 p.m now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour and about the ninth hour it says Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and, it, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Verse 50 says, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Mm -hmm. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. 52 and 53 says the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city 
and appeared to many. I'm going to read verses 52 and 53 again, for that's where we'll take our subject. It says, the tombs also were opened. Somebody say the tombs were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep. That means uh, uh, saints of old who were dead. They, it says that they were raised. And coming out of the tombs, it says, after his resurrection. Somebody say, after his resurrection. Amen. For the next couple of moments, I want to use that very simple topic or subject right there and just use those same three words to say after his resurrection. Somebody say after his resurrection. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord after um, his resurrection for the last uh, three, four weeks of the month of March. We've been talking through a series entitled There's More. Somebody say there's more. Uh, and, and the reason I feel like God has uh, drawn us to this topic is the fact that we are we live in a very materialistic society. Our culture, right? We 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 like the labels. We want the, uh, the 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 fancy cars. We like the nice things. But what God is saying to us today, and for the entire month, He's been saying to us, "There's so much more." that I have to offer. Yes, I am the God that provides. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Yes, I own cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. But I have so much more to offer you if you're willing to dig a little deeper. My God, if you are willing to go beyond the surface, beneath the surface, he says that there is so much more available to you. And so we started out at, in John chapter 10 and 10, it says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he says, I came that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. My God, can somebody say abundantly? And, and, and as we talked about that the first Sunday in March, we understood that when Jesus used the term abundantly, it carries the, uh, the mathematical meaning of surplus, my God. And when we think of surplus, then we think of it, we think of it in terms of great quantity. Essentially, it means you have more than what's required. Huh? And when you have more than required, then you have what is called X. Excess, uh huh? You should you you should right now be imagining a nice water pitcher. It's a nice pitcher. It's it's not made of plastic, but it's made of glass. And you don't uh, just put it out for anybody. But uh, in the household that I grew up in, you you only brought out the good china when there was when you had special company. And so and so you don't pull out this water pitcher, the one that's glass because uh, you bought it from Williams Sonoma and it, it sets you back about a hundred dollars but the thing that I want you to understand is that this water pitcher holds about two and a half quarts of water now the cup that you have to pour the water into only holds eight ounces, uh -huh. uh, but you begin to pour, and as you continue to pour, eventually you'll get to the rim, and if you stop there, then you have met the capacity, hear me good, you have met the capacity of that container, and that's all right if you're okay with just being normal, that's okay if you are uh, just, uh, just okay with being uh, ordinary, and it's okay if you only get thirsty once or maybe even twice is uh, if you just fill it to the rim then that's okay if uh, my God if you don't have more than just one need but once it meets the rim my God my God my God tells me that I continue that he continues to pour my God and the substance he pours in to your life it overflows my God can you imagine that pitcher and that little that little glass of water and by now the water is overflowing the rim that's my God and so he's pouring into your life a substance that he says it is overflowing that's why when you're faced with life's challenges and where others quit you were able to stand it wasn't because my God it wasn't because of you but it was due to the fact that in your time of distress hear me good God supplied you with an abundance of faith my God when you 
thought you was going to give up, the only thing that kept you pushing was not that God gave you enough faith, but it was that the fact that he gave you abundant faith. My God, it was during the time, my God, when everybody walked out on you. Everybody was talking mess about you. They wanted nothing to do with you. And because those closest to you had turned your back, then you felt you wasn't worthy of being loved, huh? But in that pit of despair, huh, uh, the only thing that lifted you out of that place was the abundant love that God, my God, poured into your life, huh? And as we are in the midst of this resurrection season, then the theme of this season year after year could be and should be called or themed or entitled abundant abundant grace huh somebody say abundant grace abundant grace because not one of us is deserving of the of what God has given us not one of us if you were to recount in your mind the things that you did uh, you don't even have to go too far you can uh, go last week or you can go last year five years ten years if you could think back to the things that you have done then then you understand you're not worthy to receive huh this the extravagant gift of salvation my God, my God, the world can gift me a 1939 Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic, which is one of the most rarest cars in the world, and it is valued at $40 million. But I'd rather have salvation because the material, the raw materials that make up that car, they will eventually rot and decay, but there's no oxidizing my salvation because in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus said rust can't touch it, huh? Jesus said moth can't touch it, huh? And the thieves and robbers, they cannot touch it, huh? Because they cannot break in and steal my salvation, huh? So you can have the world, huh? Just give me salvation, huh? Somebody say you can have the world, huh? But just give me salvation, my God. Just give me salvation. So today we come to celebrate our resurrected Savior. And the fact that he was resurrected tells us he first had to do what? He first had to die. Understand that. If he was resurrected and he first had to, he had to die. And I, I want to be very clear here. The fact that he died doesn't mean that he was defeated or that someone took his life. I need you to understand that real good here. The fact that he dies does not mean that he was defeated. It doesn't mean uh, that, that, that somebody uh, got the upper hand on him or somebody had greater power than he did because Jesus said, he says, I laid down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me. No one snatches it from from me, huh? But I lay it down willingly of my own accord. I, he says, I have authority or I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again, huh? In other words, Jesus is predicting right here. He's predicting his death at the hands of evil men, but he says they have no authority to take my life, huh? But as the good shepherd, he says, I freely lay down my life, huh? for my sheep, huh? Jesus here is in no way, he, he's no, in no way a victim of circumstance, but he was solely in control of his own destiny. That's why the apostle Paul could write, he humbled himself, huh? And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And the reason Jesus had to die was that he had to destroy this thing called sin, huh? Understand that that, that, that day that we celebrate on, on Good Friday, just a, a couple of days ago, uh, the event that took place uh, was the crucifixion. It was the place on Calvary's cross that, that Jesus died. But the reason that he had to die was so that sin would be destroyed. And I need you to understand that sin has not always been in this earth. You do understand that, right? Sin has not always been in this earth. Because when you go back to the book of Genesis and it says, in the beginning created you will see a list of a lot of things but one thing you will not see listed is what sin. 
sin, my God. You will see the day and the night created. You will see the sky, the seas, the, the land created. You will see the sun, the moon, the stars, and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. You will see those who were created. And on the sixth day, he created man in his own image and likeness. But one thing you will not see listed, huh, is sin, huh? And to go a step further, one thing they never concerned themselves was with was death, huh? Uh, Adam and Eve, they were never concerned about death, huh? Whether we're talking about physical or spiritual death, it was of no concern to them because there was no barrier between them and God, huh? Anytime God got good and ready, huh? He would just come walking through the garden, huh? And anytime they needed him, they would call on him, huh? And he would come strolling through the garden, huh? And they could talk to him face to face, huh? And as far as physical death, they had access to the tree of life. And so, so death had no power. I need you to understand that death had no power. They had total access to physical and spiritual life, huh? So sin and death were not of God, huh? But then that old slimy serpent, the devil, tricked Eve into believing you won't surely die if you try this fruit. I wonder how many times has the devil will use that same pickup line with us thousands of years later, huh? You won't surely die, my God, if you tell that little lie, huh? You won't surely die if you lay with that person, huh? Outside the confines of marriage, huh? You won't surely die die, my God, if you entertain that scandalous conversation, huh, and the same line that he fed to Eve is the same line that he's literally killing us with on today, huh, because when Eve ate the fruit or when they, when we tell the lie, we are disobeying God's word, huh, and immediately this comprehension of guilt, huh, is placed upon us, and when it came upon Adam and Eve, they attempted to pre prevent themselves, huh, from being discovered by God, huh? Now, it's interesting to me that Satan had already been cast out of heaven, huh? And he sees that God is spending lots of intimate time, huh, uh, with, uh, with Adam and Eve. It doesn't get any more intimate, huh, than God breathing into the nostrils, huh, the breath of life, huh? It doesn't get any more intimate, huh, than God giving them dominion, huh, in in this earth, huh? And so Satan is sitting back, hating on them, huh? He's mad, huh? Oh my God, he sees, huh? He sees all of this that God has given to man and woman, huh? And he devises a plan that he believes will completely ruin God's plan, huh? So he introduces Adam and Eve to what? Sin, huh? My God, in Romans 6 tells us, huh, that the wages of sin is death, huh? We know that scripture right there, the wages of sin or the compensation, the payment, huh? My God, or the punishment or the penalty for sin is death, huh? It's no different than the paycheck that you receive at the end of the two weeks, huh? My God, it's, I expect a paycheck for the, for the hours that I have worked, huh? My God, what the scripture here is telling us that we should expect death for the sin that we have committed, huh? But understand, my God, understand that sin here, understand that, that sin empowers death, huh? Understand death had no authority in the earth until sin showed up. My God, stay with me. We're going somewhere here. Sin had no authority. It had no power. It had, or, or death had no, no, no authority, no power. It had no influence. There was nothing to be afraid of until sin showed up, huh, and gave it authority, huh, so that's why death was nowhere on their radar, huh, until they engaged in sin, huh, now I have to talk about sin for a moment, huh, because it's imperative that we understand, huh, that we have an earnest need for salvation, huh, if we were to peruse Romans chapter 5 through 8, huh, this literally blew my mind here, huh, we would see that the apostle Paul uses the term sin, huh? He uses it 41 times, huh? In these four chapters, huh? That's on average about 10, uh, 10 uh, times he uses them per chapter, huh? But out of 
of these 41 times that the Apostle Paul uses, uses this term, huh? He only uses the term as a verb only one time. Mm -hmm. He only uses the, the, the sin in, in, a, in, a action, uh, in an action form only one time. Huh? So that tells me that the other 40 times that he uses uh, this, uh, this term in the four chapters, it is used as a noun. Huh? And I don't know about you, but when I was in first or second grade, uh, my English teacher taught me that a noun is a person, place, or thing. Huh? My God, that blew my my mind because when you think about sin, you typically think about sin, the sin that you committed. You think about sin in the form of a verb. Huh? You never think about the sin that has control over you. Huh? But Paul said in Romans 7, he says, now if I do what I do not want, huh? he says, it is no longer I who do it, but sin uh -huh, that dwells within me. Huh? When he's talking about sin here, he's not talking about huh, the action that he reluctantly committed, my God, uh, but he's referring to the power uh, that Satan can use to entice you uh, to sin. Uh. He's talking about the influence, uh, my God, that, that is over you, that pushes you or prompts you or provokes you uh, to sin. Uh. And so what Paul really is describing here uh, is a person who is enslaved to sin. Uh. That means against my own volition, I would do the things I hate because there is a power working against me, huh, to provoke me to do wrong, huh, and unless that power is somehow broken, huh, I will always and forever be a slave to what? Sin, huh, but what do you do, huh, if you have a to live for God, huh? To have every promise he has made to you, huh? But you are a slave to sin, huh? And being a slave, you have no choice, huh? Being a slave, you have, you have no rights, huh? You have no privileges, huh? Because the rights and privileges, huh? Have been revoked, huh? So you have no power, huh? So that's why you need a deliverer, my God, huh? That's why you need a savior, huh? You need someone, huh, who has more power, huh, than the power that is controlling you, huh? Someone that can come in, huh, and disrupt the status quo, huh, and set you free, huh? Someone that can come in, huh, and break the shackles, huh? Not just break the shackles, huh, but destroy the shackles, huh? Because that which once bound me, huh, can never bind me again, huh? Somebody shout, huh, I need a savior. I need a savior. I need somebody more powerful than me, huh? I need somebody that's more powerful than the force that influences me or entices me to sin, huh? And many of you are in here today to celebrate, huh? And you have on your Easter suits and you have on your Easter dresses. I saw baby girl Faith back there. She had on that Carolina blue and my, my Tar Heels uh, got beat earlier uh, this weekend, but she looked so beautiful. She looks so beautiful in, in, in that Tar Heel blue dress, huh? But I need you to understand, my God, it's not because we're not here to celebrate because of a bunny rabbit, my God. We're not here to celebrate because of an Easter egg. My God, that's what the world wants you to focus on, my God. But we understand that Easter is a very loose translation for Pasha, huh? Or what is called Passover, huh? which is a sacred observance that was instituted by God to commemorate Israel's deliverance from Egypt, huh? If you recall, these Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years, huh? They had no rights, huh? And they had no privileges, huh? And, they, and, and when they got fed up, they cried out for a deliverer, huh? And guess what, huh? God showed up, huh? There's something about when the people of God get fed up, huh? With their circumstance, when you get tired, tired of going along just to get along, huh? When you are truly tired and you're ready for change, huh? That's when God will step in, huh? And make the change, huh? So the people cried out and God showed up in a glorious way, huh? But their deliverance happened, huh? By way of a process. Somebody say a process. The Bible tells me that there were nine 
plagues, huh? But Egypt wouldn't let Israel go, huh? My God, there were nine plagues, huh? And Egypt had Israel in one of those WWE headlocks, huh? And he wouldn't let her go, huh? Understand, you may have a desire to be free from sin, but that does not mean that sin is just going to let you go, huh? But then God instructed Israel, huh? My God, he instructed every household of Israel, huh, to get a lamb and not just any lamb, but a lamb without blemish, and they were to kill him and take his blood and smear it over the doorpost, huh, and the death angel would pass over, huh, and so what I need to highlight for you here real quick is a perfect lamb had to die, huh, in order for the sacrificial offering to be received. Of God, huh? And when the blood was applied, my God, huh? Then death passed over, huh? The death passed over the Israel household, huh? And he looked for a home that wasn't covered by the blood, huh? I need somebody to thank God right there, huh? Because I'm covered by the blood, huh? My God, huh? My God. And so when, when the Egyptians experienced this death, huh? That Israel was freed from that bondage, huh? Israel did, was delivered huh, from the, their Egyptian slave masters. Huh? And we are to understand that the Passover lamb is a type or an illustration uh, of Jesus Christ. Huh? Isaiah said it this way. He says, he was wounded for our transgressions. Huh? He was bruised for our iniquities. Huh? The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Huh? And with his stripes, we are healed. Huh? Jesus, knowing the entire time, huh? of his existence in this earth, huh, that he came to die, huh, to destroy the power of sin, huh. Literally, he was a man on a mission, huh, and in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he was inching closer and closer to Calvary, my God, his mental was under great distress, but because of his love for you, huh, he wouldn't allow that to stop him, huh, but he cried out, Father, huh, if thou be willing, he said, huh, remove this cup from me, huh? But he said, nevertheless, huh, not my will, huh, but your will be done, huh? I wish y'all could understand, huh, the power of his nevertheless, huh? He's making an informed decision, my God, huh? Because he knows what's next for him, huh? He knows the mocking and the beating, huh, that is on its way, huh? He knows the flogging that has to take place, huh? Before the crucifixion, huh? Because it was required, huh? By Roman law, huh? He knows the whip that is used, huh? During the flogging has leather strips, huh? And in the middle of the strips, huh? Are metal balls, huh? Which causes deep uh, bruising, huh? And at the tips of the leather, huh? My God, there are pieces of bone, huh? And when the bone makes contact with the skin, huh? It digs into his muscles, huh? Tearing out chunks of flesh, huh? And exposing the bone that underneath, huh? And the flogging will leave his back, huh? Completely ripped to shreds, huh? And by this time, huh? He has lost a lot of blood, huh? Which will cause his blood pressure to fall, huh? And his body to enter into shock, huh? He knows crucifixion by now, huh? Was invented by the Persians, huh? And it is the most painful death invented by humanity, huh? In fact, crucifixion, huh? Is where we get our English word excruciating, huh? from because, huh, it is a form of slow, huh, painful suffering, huh, and it was a form of punishment, huh, that was only reserved for slaves, huh, insurrectionists, huh, and the worst of criminals, huh, yet our Savior, huh, surrendered himself, huh, to this death, huh, and in our passage today, my God, huh, it says now from the sixth hour, huh, there was darkness, my God, huh, over all the land, huh, until the ninth hour, huh? And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out, huh? My God, with a loud voice saying, huh? Eli, Eli, huh? Lama sabachthani, huh? That is my God, huh? My God, huh? Why have you forsaken me, huh? And I don't want you to miss this here, huh? I don't you, I don't want you to just pass over, huh? Or gloss over this here, huh? Because although John 101 says, huh? In the beginning was the word, huh? And the word was with God, huh? And 
the Word was God, huh? And in verse 14 tells us, huh? And the Word was made flesh, huh? And dwelt among us, huh? And in John 10 and 30, huh? Jesus says it himself. He says, huh? I and my Father are one, huh? That tells me, huh? That Jesus and God, huh? Are inseparable, huh? They're indivisible, huh? Because they are one in the same, huh? So here, why does, hear me good, huh? Why does Jesus say, my God, my God, huh? Why have you separated from me, huh? My God, my God, huh? Why have you left me out here to die, huh? My God, my God, huh? Why have you walked out on me, huh? My God, my God, huh? Why have you left me alone, huh? My God, my God, huh? Why you leave me out here like this, huh? Doing Bible study, huh? On Wednesday night, huh? Elder DeAndre pointed out the fact, huh? That everywhere else, huh? My God, huh? When Jesus refers to God, huh? He calls him Father, huh? But here he calls him my God, huh? And my God is different from Father, huh? Because Father speaks to intimacy, huh? Father speaks to a familiarity, huh? Father speaks to a closeness, huh? But my God speaks to a sense of uh, disengagement, huh? My God speaks to, huh? A separation that was intentional, huh? In comparison to the closeness of a father, huh? And the only reason God could ever disengage from his son is, huh? Because of sin, huh? And so what's happening is here, huh? What's happening here is an exchange. Huh? Somebody say an exchange. Jesus has given himself, huh? He's given his righteousness, huh? And in exchange, he's clothed himself, huh? With our sins, huh? He's given his perfection, huh? To take on our imperfection, huh? My God, huh? So when he suffered on that cross, huh? He bore the sins of the world, huh? Once and for all, huh? So whether you were dr a drunk, huh? Or whether you were a fornicator, huh? Or a dope dealer, huh? Or whatever sort of sinner you you are, huh? Jesus gave his perfect life, huh? As a substitute, huh? For our sinful lives, huh? To provide opportunity, huh? That sins would be forgiven, huh? For everyone who accepts his sacrifice, huh? That's why the scripture says, huh? For he has made him, huh? To be sin for us, huh? Who knew no sin, huh? That he might be made the righteousness, huh? Of God in him, huh? In other words, huh? The guilt of sin and shame, huh? Huh, has been wiped away. Somebody say wiped away by the precious blood of Jesus. Huh? And therefore, huh, we have been justified by faith. Huh? And we have peace with God huh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? And verse 50 says, huh, and Jesus cried out huh, with a loud voice. Huh? And he yielded up his ghost. Huh? And behold, the curtain of the temple huh, was rent in two huh, from top to bottom. Huh? And, the bite, and the earth shook. Huh? And the rocks were split. Huh? And Matthew's God Huh? It doesn't tell us huh, what exactly Jesus said. Huh? My God, when he cried out with a loud voice. Huh? But if you look, if you look huh, in John chapter 19, huh, the writer tells us, he said, huh, it is finished. Huh? And he bowed his head huh, and gave up the ghost huh, when he said it is finished. Finish, huh? What he's really saying is, huh? It's paid in full, huh? What he's really saying, huh? Is that it's all complete, huh? It's kind of like, hear me good, huh? It's kind of like, huh? Taking a family of four, huh? Out to a nice dinner, huh? Somewhere like Steak 48, huh? My God, and you know how your kids get and your wife get, huh? When you take them out to a nice dinner, huh? Everybody wants their own appetizer, huh? Everybody wants the most expensive steak. Huh? Everybody wants their own dessert, huh? And so at the end of the dinner, my God, huh? The husband is dreading the bill, huh? Because he knows there is a debt, huh? That has to be paid, huh? But when the waitress returns, huh? She only returns with the leftovers in the to-go boxes, huh? And when you ask for the check, huh? She smiles and points to the other side of the room, huh? And 
it says it's paid in full, huh? I wish I had somebody in here today, huh, who could understand the price that was paid, huh? When I looked at my account, huh, it said insufficient funds, huh? When I looked at my account, huh, all I saw was cobwebs, huh? When I looked at my account, huh, I didn't have enough to cover the debt, huh? But Jesus stepped in, huh, right on time, huh? And he paid it in full. Somebody say paid in full. Paid in full, my God. Listen, listen, listen. And when he gave up the ghost, hear me good. When he gave up the ghost, the Bible says, it says that the curtain of the temples uh, was torn in two from top to bottom, my God. Uh, when you understand the temple curtain, when you understand its main purpose was to separate the holy place from the holies of holies. And it was the holies of holies where it was where uh, the presence of God dwelled, huh? But but this curtain wasn't just some thin piece of linen, huh? Well, the curtain was 60 feet high, my God, 30 feet wide, huh? And as thick as a man's hands, about four inches, huh? So the curtain really said, stay out, my God. Uh, the curtain really said, everybody doesn't have access to God's presence, huh? But when Jesus gave up the ghost, huh? And the curtain was torn in two, God was saying, huh? You are welcome, huh? Come right on in, Huh? He has given you access, huh? He has given you access, huh? To his presence, huh? And the Bible says the earthquake and the rocks split, huh? And the Bible was, in the, and the earth was shaking so bad, huh? That the tombs opened up because unlike graves where the bodies would be buried under the earth, huh? The rock tombs were above the surface and it, it wasn't abnormal for them to open after a strong earthquake because of the strain that the shaking placed on them, huh? But notice Matthew, huh? He isn't recording the natural consequence, huh? Of a large earthquake, huh? Because he said, huh? He went on to record that many bodies, my God, of the saints who had fallen asleep, huh? Were raised, huh? And had come out of the tombs, huh? After the resurrection, huh? After his resurrection, huh? Somebody say, after his resurrection, it wasn't until after God raised Jesus from the dead, huh, that these dead believers, huh, were quickened, huh, and got up, huh, and went into Jerusalem, huh, and the Bible says, huh, many people witnessed this, huh. My God, it's not just what he said, she said, huh, but many people, huh, saw this with their own eyes, huh, and on this Resurrection Sunday, huh, I need you to understand, huh, the significance of resurrection, huh, because we understand according to Hebrews 9 huh without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin huh and so Jesus is the Passover lamb the perfect lamb of God huh that took away the sin of the earth huh my God and remember if sin empowered death huh then if there's no there's no sin huh then death has no authority huh then the penalty of sin has been broken huh through the crucified Christ huh but what about the power of sin huh because it provokes us to do wrong huh well, Romans 6 tells me, huh, that when we take on Christ's identity, huh, through baptism, huh, and we are fully immersed in that watery grave, huh, in the name of Jesus, huh, that our old man is crucified with him, huh, that the body of sin might be destroyed, huh, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin, huh, so it is through the process of sanctification, huh, that we are freed from the power, huh, of sin, huh, because whom the Son has set free, huh, is free free indeed, huh? But this is all well and good, huh? But what I need you to understand is, huh? This wouldn't have been all for nothing, huh? If Jesus had not been raised from the dead, huh? All of this would have been a nice event, huh? But if Jesus would not have been raised from the dead, huh? It would have been all for nothing, huh? He would have died a horrific death, huh? All for nothing, huh? If he wasn't raised from the dead, huh? Because his getting up, huh? Is ever uh -huh, of his divine nature, huh? His getting up, huh? Is evidence that he is who he said he was, huh? 
it is the evidence of his divine nature, huh? Because only God has power, huh? Over both life and death, huh? But his resurrection also, huh? Displayed that God was satisfied, huh? With his anointing or atoning sacrifice, huh? For our sin, huh? My God, huh? Could you imagine if Jesus was beaten and flawed, huh? And experienced such excruciating pain and died, huh? And was never raised, huh? Can you imagine he went through all of that, huh? And we were still slaves to sin, huh? My God, all of that, huh? Would have been for nothing but the fact that God raised him up, my God, is an indication, huh? That God was pleased with him, huh? It is an indication, my God, huh? It is an indication, huh? That God was pleased with Jesus, huh? Giving his perfect life, huh? As a substitute for our sinful lives, huh? And the Bible says, huh? When he gave up the ghost, huh? The earthquake and the tombs open, huh? I need you to understand on Good Friday, huh? My God, huh? We should have been celebrating more than the, in, than the office, huh? Being closed, huh? We should have been celebrating more, huh? Than receiving PTO, huh? But what we should have been celebrating, huh? Was a relinquishing of the grip, huh? Of those things, huh? That have had you bound, huh? My God, I come to prophesy this morning, huh? My God, huh? That you are being discharged, huh? From that place of depression, huh? You are being set free from, huh? That pit of despair, huh? You are being freed, huh? From that body of sickness, huh? You are being given up, huh? By insecurity and anxiety, huh? fear and doubt, huh? No longer has a hold on you, huh? Somebody say, I'm being released, huh? I'm being released, huh? Because when Jesus got up, huh? He graced me up, huh? And now I am free, huh? And because he got up, huh? I can get up too, huh? And it doesn't matter, huh? How long you've been dead in sin, huh? Because I'm reminded of Jairus' daughter, huh? When he first came to Jesus, huh? She was dying, huh? But by the time Jesus got to her, huh? She had died huh? But he took her by the hand, huh? And said, little girl, get up, huh? And she got up, huh? And started walking around, huh? And there was the, the, the widow of Nain, huh? My God, her son was in the casket, huh? Of the funeral possession, huh? And she, when she has arrived, huh? He touched the casket, huh? And said, son, huh? Get up, huh? And he sat up, huh? And started talking, huh? Then there is Lazarus, my God, huh? Lazarus had been dead, huh? For four days. Huh? And when Jesus got to the tomb, huh? He said, Come out, come out, huh? Wherever you are, huh? He said, Come out, Lazarus, huh? And Lazarus began to move, huh? Lazarus got up, huh? And he came out of the tomb, huh? With those grave clothes, huh? I need somebody to understand, huh? When Jesus raised up, huh? When Jesus got up, huh? He got up so that you can get up, huh? And you're coming out with your grave clothes on, huh? He's coming out, you're coming out, huh? Get up out of sin. Sin, huh? Get out of depression, huh? Get up out of depression, huh? Get up out of insecurity, huh? Get up out of faithlessness, huh? Get up out of, huh? Doubt, huh? I need you to get up out, huh? Because when he got up, huh? He raised you up, huh? And you have been set free, huh? Free indeed, huh? Somebody give God the glory, huh? In this place, huh? Because after he rose, huh? I rise, huh? After he was set free, huh? I am free, huh? Somebody ought to begin to leap, huh? Somebody ought to begin to dance, huh? Because of Jesus, huh? When he got up off that grave, huh? Satan, huh? Death, huh? Could not hold him. The grave, huh? Could not hold him. So when he got up, huh? When he was free, huh? You were set free, huh? Somebody magnify our God, huh? Lift him up, huh? Celebrate him, huh? Because he is, huh? Jehovah Child, huh? He is, huh? The lily of the valley, huh? He is, huh? The bright and morning star. He is, huh? My deliverer, huh? Magnify him, huh? His name is Jesus, huh? Jesus, 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 huh? Jesus, the crystal, huh? Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the Lamb of God, huh? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Magnify. Magnify him. Magnify him. Listen. Listen. The Bible says, the Bible says no other name under heaven. No other name under heaven. 
by which men can be saved. That is unisex, men and women can be saved. Because he got up. There is not, there's not condition. There's not a, 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 a sin verb that you can do that disqualifies you from that type of freedom. He, and scripture says he got up or he, he died once and for all. Y'all understand that? For folks of all times, whatever you have done, Jesus died for you. He knew we were ill-equipped, we were impotent. Y'all know what that means? That means powerless to this, this, this sin nature, right? That over and over and over entices us to sin. Hear me good. It don't matter how, quote unquote, of a good person you are. You have no ability, absolutely zero ability in and of yourself to live in a way that pleases him. You can be the biggest philanthropist. You can uh, do a lot of community services and things like that. And you may not have ever cussed in your life, but there is sin that's still dwelling on the inside of you. And even once you receive salvation, you will not be perfect. But because of the precious blood of the Lamb, when God sees you, he's looking through the blood of Jesus, which declares that you are innocent. Declares that you are innocent. That's the God that we serve. That said, I will, I will endure the cross. I will take on your guilt and shame. How many in here feel guilty when you sin? Feel bad. Sometimes you feel so bad that you don't even feel like you are qualified to even go into the presence of God. I'm talking real talk now. You don't even, because you have an awareness of the sin and you have that guilty conscience. And so you like, how can a God love me when I keep messing up time and time again? But because of Jesus' sacrifice, God does not hold that over your head. Because every time you messed up, when you messed up and when you ask God to forgive, when you surrender yourself to God, guess, what that, guess where that sin goes? It goes right there on the cross where Jesus died. And so we have the power. And maybe there is somebody here this morning that, that doesn't know about that resurrection power. Maybe there's somebody here, maybe there's one here that, that has been dead in your trespasses. You have been a slave to a sinful habit that you've participated in all of your life. This is all you know. And you feel helpless because you cannot break this influence. Jesus said, I died and rose just for you. I want you to come. Let us pray with you. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. I want you to come. You may have sickness in your body. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is a couple more of you. Maybe you have not received the pardon of your sin. That's why he died. And today you can receive the greatest gift of the, in the world. There's no gift greater than salvation. Listen, we look at the, the news each and every day. Y'all can begin to pray with, with those. We look at the news every day and we see people dying. And I'm not trying to use a scare tactic, it's just real. You see young people dying, older people dying, mid, middle-aged people dying. And I don't want that on my, I don't want that weight. 
I want to know that if I were to go to sleep tonight and God just says, it's my time, I want to know that I'm going to go back with him. This is your opportunity. I want you to come. If there's anybody in this place desire, definitely begin to pray with those that are. Is there anybody else? Let us stand to our feet. We're going to be praying along with those that are that are here this morning. Let's pray with those. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you this morning. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for the sacrifice of Jesus. The sacrifice that, that was paid for, for each and every one of us. We were not worthy. We are not worthy. We don't, we're not qualified. But God, you saw, you look beyond our faults to see our needs. You look beyond our situation to see that I had a need for you. And you died horrible death that I might be free. And so I thank you. And God, maybe there is somebody here this morning that may be afraid to come to the altar today, but I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will continue to work on their hearts. God, that there are some right now that are contemplating their, their thoughts are running through their head. And I just pray right now that God, even as they leave this place and they go home on tonight, God, that you will continue to work their hearts tonight. God, until we all surrender unto you, until we give you our yes, until we fully surrender and give you our hearts and our minds, our entire being, God, we say yes right now in the name of Jesus. God, we say have your way, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you our will. We give you our desires. We give you our dreams. We give you everything that we are right now in the name of Jesus, that you may have your way in the name of Jesus. So we pray that you will restore revive. We pray that you will reveal unto us your desires for our lives. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you begin to breathe. There are bones that are dry. There are those that's been fighting, that's been in a battle all of their lives, God. And like the, the dry bones in the valley, God, hallelujah. They are soldiers, been on the battlefield, but they're tired. So I pray that you will breathe upon us in the name of Jesus. That the power, the resurrecting power may flow right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in Jesus' name.